Hi, my name is Angelo. Today I'm going to show you what's my setup to cut stones. I do faceting, I, got, I do also cabbing using the faceter and I also do concave cutting. And I'll show you how I'm set up actually to do these things. All right, follow me in, in this quick overview. First tool Thank you me. need is a trim saw, like this one. So you got a diamond disc, the thinner the better because then you're going to waste less material. This has been in Saturday's water. It's going to use the water to call off materials and then you slice off things. That's the first tool that you will need. It's a trim saw. Of course, a lamp to see better. Uh, this one comes from, this is from America, yes. And it comes also with a, a grinding wheel if you want to make uh, cabochons. Well, this is just the beginning to make uh, cabochons. Okay, let's pass to another thing. Of course, you need a faceting machine, like this one. This is a facetron. It's a bit old, but still kicking. You can hear it's still old. It's not silent as it was at the beginning. This is like probably, it has 17 years, that's why. Now, of course, you need uh, an assortment of flat laps. You know, different grades, different grids. You go from uh, 100, I mean, you can go from, uh, this is an 80, 80 grit. It's very, very, very rough. It's to eat up quickly <laughs> materials. And then you pass to the 220, 240. This one is old, just to be replaced. And then so I've been using this this stuff here, which is very thin, and you just put it on the base, on the base lap, which this doesn't have any grit on, but is used only to have to host these laps here, which are very thin and cheap. So this is a 220 or 320, and then you can go with. Uh, this laps here, these are, these are from a Ritec. This is a 320, but it cuts like a 600. And this is one, this is a 600, which cuts like a, a 1200. All right. Now for the brew polish, I would actually buy me a copper, a copper lap. Because you can charge it with whatever uh, uh, grit you want of diamond, and it's going to be much faster. Okay, then you need polishing laps for quartz and some other materials, I prefer the ultralaps. This one very thin in miler, you can see. This one is just another lap to hold this into place. So you, uh, you put a film of oil or water between this lap and the ultralap and it's gonna hold it into place spinning, keep it moist and it's gonna polish very well any quartz. This is a spectra. Spectra kind, the blue one. Very useful. And then you got your. This is um, a ceramic lap, which is used usually for the um, corundums, so ruby, sapphires. I, I polish with this. And um, my favorite, it's a tin lap. This one, once you put a bit of oil and a bit of diamond on, we will polish pretty much everything. Okay. Then we are done as concerning laps. What you need is a bunch of these faceting diagrams. This, for example, is from uh, Jeff R. Graham. Uh, you can find many in internet. Uh, my favorite place to get them is it's called uh, Facet diagram.org and you can download the uh, free ones yeah i got like you know i collected quite a a bit of them as you can see you can find many shapes and so on then let's pass to the tools that you really need and they're here other tools you really need is a gas torch just to heat up the cutting wax that hold the stones. These are the dots which were supplied 
always with the machines. Whatever machines you, you buy, you're going to have these dots here in different shapes, different sizes. Um, you're going to melt this wax with this tool to set the stones into the dots, to dot the stones. Of course, a transferring, transferring block, which also comes with a machine, a 45 degree extension to cut the tables, and diamond powder. I love diamond powder. You also good. You also get some of these, which are very useful to clear up the wax from the stones and to do other things. And then, if you want to go advanced, you can get yourself an, a concave, an OMF machine. This is from uh, Polymetric, and it comes with the base adapted for the passage on. So it means that I, I did get this head here. I detach, I slide it away from here, as you can see. Detach, and then put it here, and it's gonna it's gonna actually cut the mandrels here. The mandrels are gonna cut the stone, grooving, making grooves. I'll show you now a mandrel to show you how does it look like. Yeah, this is for example a, a 13 millimeters diameter, 600 grit. So you got this one, which goes into the into this thing here, the collet. The spins are wet. I mean, the the, the, the sponge is going to be always wet, keeping the, the stone wet. And then you go from 600 to 1,200, and pre-polish at 3,000, and then at 50,000 the polishing. And what you achieve at the end is stuff like this. So this is a concave. I just finished now. It's a concave stone. You start with a flat faceting and then you realize these grooves underneath. You can also realize it on the top. Now this time for this request, it was meant to be only underneath. So I just grooved it as you can see. Different angles. So from the top, it will en enhance the cutting and the brilliance of the stone. It looks like a diamond this thing. It's just the top. So that's basically it. My setup also includes a drill mill, drill machine, so I can drill holes and I also sculpture stones. Um, ah, yeah, another thing which is very important: the goggles, magnifying goggles. I started at the beginning using only naked eyes, but uh, <laughs> slowly, slowly with time, those were not enough anymore. So I just I had, I had to use these things, but and then I realized that without this, you will overlook many defects on the faceting, on the and also the, 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 the finish, the final finish of the polishing. So those are very important. So another important thing is also the scale. Scales. I got this one, which measures grams, and I have another one which measures uh, carats. It is very important to understand what you do. You know how you end up from the rough weight until to the cut the finished gem. Another tool is very important is the caliber. So you're going to measure the stones. Sometimes they ask you uh, calibrate the stones. So to make them all the same you need this. Or to cut into size and shape you need this. And then maybe you can get of course also this one are handy. This one's are very handy. The tweezers to handle all the stones. And Something very, very important too that I discovered that <laughs> it come very handy is the plastic bags, little pouches. Very nice. So, thank you for looking. Thank you for checking. I hope this is going to be useful for you. Subscribe and like it if you like. Thanks a lot. And up to the next tutorial. Bye.